Hello and welcome again to Beyond the Game. I am Kendall Gammon, 15-year NFL veteran, joined as always by Mr. Lamont Winston, the OG of player development, player engagement. Call it whatever you is, whatever you want. It's basically the life of the player off the field, uh, not between the lines, and when the clock's not running in the game. And uh, Lamont, it's always good to see you today. Kendall, it is great to see you as well. Uh, always, uh, I, again, I'll say it again, Miss Kansas City. I understand it's raining there, so I don't miss that. Uh, no. It's sunny here in Florida, but uh, I'm excited to be on the show today and just talk about, again, give our listeners more of an inside look at what's really happening right now uh, at, at these NFL franchises, at these, at these camps right now. Yeah, it, it's really uh, something that I don't, <clears throat> I don't think uh, – uh, folks get enough uh, chance to look at and, and understand about. We're going to have uh, current uh, NFL player Ty, uh, Tyrell Adams on here a little bit later. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. He actually spent a couple different uh, stints on the practice squad with the Kansas City Chiefs. So he is, I won't say local, but he he is somebody who's been in the framework for a little bit and got a really interesting story. But uh, let, let's let's go back to what you talked about and and. What we're always talking about is what's going on off the field, uh, maybe in the locker room, but outside the locker room also, just in general with the players and the families. This time of year, they've gotten back into the weight room. Uh, They're training with uh, the strength and conditioning, trying to get faster, twitchier, all kinds of different things. And I would have I would imagine. But you can enlighten us as uh, player development, player engagement. This is a prime time to really get the guys sometimes because you probably have more time because they by law letter of the law with the agreement with the NFL, they can only be with the coaches so long. Is that a fair assessment? Yes. Kendall, there's um, uh, this is a big time uh, for player engagement, heads of player engagement uh, in the NFL with the veteran players. Um, yeah. Because the CBA rules, they can only be there a certain amount of time. So guys can get out and do career shadows. Guys can get out. Uh, and, and, and network and do the things they need to do to help you know build their brands and, and, yeah. and, and their next steps uh, uh, off the field. Uh, uh, but the simultaneously, then there's the rookie group, right? And yeah. they don't have those privileges <laughs> right now, no. uh, so to speak. Um, and Kendall, they, they're, they're, they really entered into, uh, uh, I, I call it like the like anxiety level number two, right? They went through the draft. Um, yeah, I got drafted, didn't get drafted where I wanted to. I didn't get drafted at all. But these guys, as you're seeing in the media, they're all getting signed. Now they're having in, entering into uh, riding at the club, getting ready for a rookie mini camp. OK, that's anxiety level number two for them. Yeah, right? because now you're going to get a real taste of a fire hose in terms of learning in the National Football League. Um, and then once those those are over, then it's. You begin to melt in with the yeah. veterans, and you know what that space is kind of like as a veteran, as a 14-year vet, Kendall. You know what that looks like, right? So it, this, is, you know, guys, like you mentioned, like you know, vets will walk by, you don't even ask your name, they don't know your name, right? Nor do they, they care. They sometimes, care. <laughs> yes, they don't care. Um, and 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 so you know, it's a it that's a time of anxiety, and then obviously off the field. Um, you know, you got family, you got friends, everybody's there. There's a, that's another whole pool of anxiety and a level of things that are happening to them because, you know, people are always trying to contact them. So we'll get into that, but I think that's a, that's a, for our fans, like it's nonstop with these rookies. It's not about just going to play ball. It, it really yeah. is. Not. Yeah, you know, it, it, the stark reality uh, is 90 guys go to camp and only 53 make it out with, I think, uh, now a seven or eight man uh, taxi squad, uh, practice squad. So um, it's tough. And, and you know, obviously the jobs are coveted. They they all pay, pay well, some better than others. Um, I'm still I'm still looking for that price ha- uh, hike for long snappers, but I don't know if it's coming anytime soon. Uh, but, you know. Again, mini camp goes on and you get in there. Now you've, you've got some selected veterans that can be in there if they're young. But in general, it's 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 not awful uh, in terms of being around everybody because they're not all there. Uh, but you mentioned it in terms of getting a, a comfort level and you know starting to learn the playbook and, and be uh, integrated into that. And, and that's the one thing I think 
uh, many of the rookies are told about and they think they understand until they get there. And they're like, wait a minute, I, I have no classes. I have nothing else. I mean, all we do is practice and study. And that playbook, I mean, is thick. I mean, anybody who thinks that you cannot be bright and play in the NFL is sadly mistaken. Absolutely, Absolutely Kendall. You know, and, and, and you're right. And, it, it, you know, things are – there's some terms that are the same, but basically you're learning a master's course, yeah. right? Uh, of, 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 of football. And, and, and you're talking about professors, coaches who do this as a living 10, 12 hours a day. And, and, and so they're, they're expecting you to learn. And so, you know, what's the number one thing? Well, you know, every rookie should check to see how they learn. And if you don't know, uh, if you're nervous and you're not a verbal, you need to raise your hand. You tell your coach because that thing keeps rolling. Right. You have to be able to communicate. And I think right. that's where player engagement comes in. You know, that's the educational piece where uh, the men and women that do that job with their staffs uh, help the rookies uh, begin to understand that. The other piece is, you know, time management. Huge. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, um, you know, what do you do? Well, the smart thing to do is to get with other rookies in your position group and study, study, study. Right. Right. Uh, you got to remember, as we, we, we've mentioned. When everybody gets there, they already know what to do. Yeah. Right. And and if you get on the grass and 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 you can't do it, that's not a good thing. So uh, this makes it a little bit harder. But I think right now, you know, it's it's you know, rookies being able to ask questions and, and I know the clubs do a fantastic job providing resources. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've heard coaches come in when they get the first group of guys in there, and as you mentioned, 90 guys go to training camp and a coach will tell you X percentage of you guys aren't going to be here. Some coaches right. have said, I need 15 guys to stand up, 20 guys to stand up. And you look around and you're like, yeah, you won't be here. That is a, you talking about a, a wake up call. And then they tell you we're all about the team. Let's go to work. Right. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and, and most of these, most of these guys, most of these guys, uh, almost without exception, have never been told they're not wanted on a team. They've always been the person. So it 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 is a mind, you know what, to say the least. Uh, something just came to mind that you jogged my memory when you were talking, which is, you know, after uh, mini camp, training, uh, rookie mini camp, you go home, and then really until training camp, the the workouts, except for another another uh regular mini camp uh everything else is optional optional now in, back in my day uh, it was optional but you just knew you, you, if you don't come you, you there's a good chance you're going to be on the wrong side of things plus people are getting in, in uh, ahead of you i remember coming back from mini camp and thinking that i'm gonna train at pittsburgh state university until i go to camp and then a couple of days later i get a call from our player engagement, which you, which you know very well, Anthony Griggs, and he says, hey, uh, good job with stuff. Just wanted to get you squared away, uh, to get you in here uh, and, and start working out with everybody. And I remember thinking, oh, man, I'm, I've, I've got to leave the nest. And I remember <laughs> making that 15-hour drive to Pittsburgh, PA, and uh, there were multiple times that I, that I had – I, I – I, I guess it was, you know, crying through anxiety and just thinking, okay, what's going on here? Because it was just a whole different part of my life. And uh, I don't have a hard time talking about that because I know other people experience that as well. It, it is a different <clears throat> thing. This day and age, um, it's it's truly optional if you, if you want to come in. But quite honestly, I think it's more optional for the guys who, if they decide they don't want to come in, they, they don't have to and they can get away with it. But, but the guys that are fighting for a position, you're just – to be honest, you're putting yourself at a huge uh, disposition if you don't come in and, and try to get after the things. Yeah, you know, Kendall, you're right. I mean, you know, and that, and, that, and there's, I think, you know, when you look at all 32 teams, there's not many guys that are not coming in, right? They, right no, I mean, you're because, right. You know, because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, there is change. And, mm -hmm. and, and if you got young guys and younger players who you played with the previous year are there, right? Mm -hmm. If you're the guy making all the money, and I'm seeing these other guys over here that's not making all the money, but they're right up on me talent-wise, 
Right. Those are informed decisions. And right now, when people are starting to, you know, because they'll get started to get looking at their boards and what they really have and what who can do what. And once these coaches get a chance to get tape and really, really study tape, right? That's when right. Decisions, that's when their minds decisions are being formulated, um, um, and 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 almost you know at least put in play. Um, so I think you know a lot of veterans are there, but I think those guys. You know, Chris, I go back to the rookies right now. I mean, you know, there. Do I find a place to stay? Well, the first round draft pick is around looking for a place to live. The top three draft picks, and the other guys aren't. It's it's you know do car. It's it's all of these things. Some guys have girlfriends. Some guys have children. I mean, yeah. you know, how do you how do you deal with that? And when do you deal with that? And you're trying to uh, study and prepare. And I think right now that's not optional. Right, right. Like that's not optional. And so you have no, yeah, you, you have no choice. You know, you 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 have no choice. And so uh, this is the thing I think that our listeners, you know, as they reading. Um, the articles, which, you know, are all great, but it's really, let's slow it down and look at a, a, a day, a week. Heck, you know, there's there, there's going to be times here in the next, if you sign so many free agents, right, you're going to remember, you're going to have 90. Somebody right. got to go. So that, exactly. Got, so sometimes you sign these undrafted free agent guys or, you know, and, these, and that means that some other guy you, you signed earlier this year mm-hmm. won't be there. Yep. And I didn't hit the grass yet. So so yep. it's a very uncertain time. I think to your point, that's why guys saying, you know, unless unless I'm an elite, elite guy, right? right. I need to be there. Yeah, you you're exactly right. I want to uh, backtrack just a little bit, something you you talked about that that jogged my memory also. Can you talk to the listeners about as a player engagement, player development coordinator? Mm-hmm. So you're seeing these things in the offseason uh, and, and talking with the guys and trying to get with them. You know, gain their trust and help them however you can. And it's all very legitimate, very, all very sincere. Do you have coaches uh, that will come to you and just want to know how guys are doing? I mean, not I mean, literally not trying to get you to tell anything personal, but just trying to get your opinion of how you see them holding up or how you see their mental ability or their mental acumen or or how they can. can are they asking you how you think? Somebody may be able to handle pressure, things like that. Oh yeah, yeah. I think, and, and that's fair. I mean, that's yeah, that, it that's is our role. And and I think coaches, you know, I've had coaches that that really want to know, like they want to know how they can help the player. I think that's. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you get you 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 get coaches who, you know, we have players that that come in with challenges, and we kind of know what those are. Then you got mm-hmm. those position coaches that will come and try to you know, ask you probably more personal things, and you know you just. There's no need for that, right? You just assure right. the coach that, you know, things that, you know, he's thinking about are being addressed, right, without having to give information about a player. But I think at this point right now, I think most of the coaches really want to you know, okay, how can I help the, the person? Um, actually, we've had coaches that said, hey, you know, Lamont, can you, how, is, uh, how is, you know, John doing? You know, it's just, it's uh, he's not enough. He's, he, he's not there. Right. He's, he's, you know, you're, and and so that gives me that's alert to me to really take a look at what's going on, and then I get with with John the player and start really looking at hey, kind of finding out what are you doing? Are you sleeping? Sometimes guys just are so full of anxiety that yeah. they can't really sleep, and they're studying. Then they're up. You get guys that are on the phones. You get guys that are playing video. I mean, so I think from that standpoint, you know, I think coaches uh, uh, try to find out, you know. Uh, how they're able to do this. Can they handle it? Um, uh, and our job is to really tell our young guys, guys, we have you. This is part of it. Right. And, 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 and you know, so, you know, if you, if you have something, I've always been a big encourager. Of, hey man, raise your hand. Like every veteran yeah. that's been on this team at some point was a rookie. So there's nobody that uh-huh. wasn't a rookie. Right. Yep. Yeah. Nobody comes in here a veteran. Right. So, so raise your hand because, that way we can we they want to hear they want to be able to help you yeah did, did you ever in your time and, and i feel like i know the, the the answer but were there ever times where you borderline felt like a surrogate parent because these guys have been pulled out of a 
an, an environment that they're comfortable with, be it a rookie and they're coming from college or being uh, from another team mm -hmm. and now they're a free agent, but they're still young. Did you ever feel like, okay, this, I mean, this guy needs me. And, and, and I, did that ever keep you up at nights? Uh, you know, I, yeah. I mean, you know, but up at nights in a good way because, you know, it's like, okay, so I know we have a plethora of resources. So how, how do I help the player? How, you know, we have, we have guys that come to us. A lot of these guys have seen, um, uh, gone through this process since the end of their college season uh, last year. Right. And they watch people in their circles change. Right. They, 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 they get on that plane and they got a whole bunch of stuff inside them where they got a lot of pain. Some of the stuff Michael Benny shared. They got pain. Yeah. Man. And so it yeah. manifests itself. They, they can't take it. They can't do all of it. And so it's, it's you know, you're working with a guy that's never talked, even remotely talked about working with a clinician, but knowing that there's a need and having those yeah. conversations and, and talking about that as a resource, right? Um, uh, you know, you, you have guys that are, you know, parents that are sideways with each other. Over, yeah. You know, in the relationship and then it, and then it, sideways then becomes with their son because the son is split right um uh there, there's, so there's relational things that are happening and yes but that's our role in player engagement it is is to be there for them right and to be able so when they we don't want them to build up walls no further right. than they've already been built right and then we show them through the process how we get through that that's communicating with them uh before they leave the building right um uh -huh. Just being around, and you'd be surprised, man. How you know when a man is when a man is scared, when the man is experiencing fear, and he mm -hmm. wants to be released of the fear, you'd be shocked how easy it is for them to come to you if they know that you've been consistent and you're asking, "How can they help you, and what's wrong?" It, right, it, it's worked for me uh, way more times than not. Okay, well, that makes a lot, and that segues perfectly. Uh, we're going to bring a gentleman on, uh, who, a, a current player with the Jacksonville Jaguars, Tyrell Adams. You, you know him very well, and we certainly appreciate him taking his time. So I'll let you introduce him a little bit, then we'll bring him on. You, you know, uh, listeners, uh, I've got an opportunity to be around Tyrell Adams uh, when I was with the Oakland Raiders. Uh, the linebacker, <laughs> uh, great special teams player. Uh, Terrell was with us in uh, 2016, 17, and um, did a fantastic job. The epitome of uh, a pro, uh, a guy that's a, that's a student in the game, uh, eight-year vet, uh, undrafted free agent, mind you, out of University yeah. of West Georgia, and has had a fantastic career in the National Football League. And it's my honor to bring uh, to you guys, our listeners, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, outside linebacker Terrell Adams. How you guys doing, man? I appreciate you having me. I appreciate you. Terrell, having me. how are you doing? And I'm blessed, man. How you doing? Fantastic. That's Terrell, awesome. My partner in crime, Kendall Gammon, 14 year vet. We spent a many years in Kansas City together. Um, um, and both of you guys being big teamers, I know there's a lot of synergies there, uh, especially yeah. talking about you know your experience making a team, finding yeah. that crack, yeah. you know, yeah. finding that way. So. We, Terrell, we are excited to have you on. Um, I didn't want our listeners to think that, you know, we were just going to be with Chiefs people, but <laughs> you were. You, you got a Chiefs, you got a Chiefs slant there a little bit. I mean, Ty, Tyrell, I was I was doing some announcing with the Chiefs Radio Network when you were in camp, in camp or at least in the, the practice squad with the Chiefs. So yeah. I remember you a little bit. And, and certainly, I mean, you're a linebacker, but special teams you've done some really nice things so number one congrats because i know it's not easy number two i'm gonna let you know and make sure that it was 15 years and not 14 because i'm not gonna let anybody take All one right. extra year away from me do not short me one bit it's <laughs> friday each year man trust me i'm the same way i want every year i was fight <laughs> exactly right i want it so, to, to real, this is what year eight or you're going on year eight correct yeah uh, eighth year yeah okay All right. Well, Terrell, you know, th th this show, as we've talked about, this is this is really about slowing it down and talking about what's happening really behind the scenes. You know, whether yep. you're a rookie, or whether you're a veteran, a veteran that's been there for a long time, or you're a middle-of-the-road veteran in terms of, you know, five, six, seven-year guy, like, like what's happening, what's the mindset, how they're approaching a new mini camp, a new year, 
Uh, but if you would take our listeners back, I mean, you and I were talking about you grew up in Georgia, yep. uh, in the Atlanta area, correct? Yep. And um, talk to us about your high school career. Were you were you the big time guy? Uh, you know, talk about you know how did you end up going to West Georgia? Give our give our listeners a little bit about you. Yeah, man. So, like you said, born and raised in Atlanta, man. Um, played ball for a while since I was like eight. Kind of uh, loved it. Didn't have really like a uh, family history in sports. Uh, something I just kind of like fell into uh, following my, one of my best friends growing up. And then um, in high school, man, I literally um, I'm I'm not even playing, man. I wasn't like the the biggest star athlete by any means. I mean, I had aspirations for. Sure. I always think about it, but. Um, I can remember vividly how like my career kind of like projected and it was my junior year. Um, I was a backup linebacker slash safe back of safety at the moment. And um, the guy, the senior ahead of me went down. I got thrown out there in the fire, man. I'm talking about extremely nervous and um, wound up playing. All right. Not too crazy, but um, continued to start it for the, for the rest of the year. Um, I had a had an average season in my mind. Uh, the next year, I go into my senior year, uh, a little bit more confidence. Play well, but nothing, nothing all all state, none, none of those types of things. Kind of got like all region recognitions. That's about it. But um, coming out had um, not too many offers. West Georgia offered me a partial scholarship, literally the week before uh, signing day, and I was just anxious to kind of like go to school. I'm a I'm going to be the first first graduate from high school, first to go to college for my family. So for right, me, that's that was, awesome. I, I just took the bait quickly. And um, I uh, wound up signing to West Georgia. Went in there as a safety, a 178-pound safety. Um, again, I wasn't the most, like, gifted, I, I would say. But uh, I knew kind of in my mind uh, how much I had to work to get better. So. I really value like working out and getting better. And I, I really was like, I was the type of guy, like I really watched other players around me and how they play. And I try to like mimic the things they do and try to like learn little things from like, I really, to this day still do that. Like I really admire guys that's like, and, and I, in a sense where it's like better than me at a position or better than me at, at, at something. And I want to kind of like mimic mm -hmm. that, and like how they get their mindset or how they use that, that technique in a sense. So I've been kind of like doing it literally since my first year in college and i remember um i was a pretty physical safety and um uh, they wound up switching me to linebacker my second year originally mm -hmm. my first year. they wound up switching me to linebacker and literally man i was so nervous it was like literally the most over it i was 202 pounds at the time i think I oh wow <laughs> and i'm like literally like in my mind i'm like 202 pounds say linebacker it was like literally like heartbreaking to me when they told me i was switching to linebacker and I was so nervous, I just thought I wasn't like capable of doing it. And it just goes back to my mindset, just like not believing myself at the time. And I can remember um um going into my sophomore, my sophomore, my redshirt sophomore season. I had a, I was splitting reps with a guy, and I just remember watching the film myself, and I was like, Man, you're so much better than that in my mind. But like for me, I had to prove it. To myself first before anybody else could see it so i man no lie i went into that that next spring camp and i remember just like working so hard like like literally in my mind i want to be the best linebacker at west georgia at the point at that time so i was like i gotta be better i gotta be better so i was working out so much man literally guys were like clowning me for like how much work i was putting in like yeah i can remember like it was like why are you working so hard like on and I couldn't put in the words at the time. Like I'm saying this now, I couldn't put into words at the time. I couldn't even say it outwardly because I felt crazy saying it in a sense. Like, but honestly, in my mind and in my heart, I wanted to be like the best linebacker in West Georgia in that moment. So I kept working, kept working, man. And we I had wound up having a really good spring. And my coach said like the craziest thing like I never expected him to say. He was like, Terrell, you're the best linebacker we got right now. Wow. Oh wow. Linebacker we have right now. <clears throat> and when I heard it, I was just like, I thought he was just talking, but like, it was just crazy for him to say it. Even if he was, like, it was just crazy for him to like, even say that to me because I literally, that was in my heart, something I wanted to work towards. I remember like having a really good spring that time. And then we wound up going into um, camp before the season. And this is my junior year. And I'm like prepared to like 
be a backup in a sense because it was a senior guy that was playing playing the same position. I knew he was going to wind up starting, so I wasn't really kind of kind of tripping. And it was like literally the same exact situation as um, as uh, high school. The guy wound up getting injured. Um, I get the opportunity to uh, play, uh, start the season opener, have a really good game, and then that kind of just like projected me into like having a really good season that season. Um, when I'm getting all American and um, different accolades postseason. And um, honestly, man, I kind of hunkered down again. And even before that season, I kind of hunkered down on just like getting better. Cause I remember in my mind, this was like the levels of ball to me. So it was a D2 linebacker, undersized D2 linebacker. And then you had D1AA, D1AA guys. And then you had the big BCS guys. So in my mind I literally was like, it went from being the best at West Georgia to being the best in the conference to I'm watching these guys on D1 AA statuses and D1 and BCS schools. How can I play like them? How can I like compete with those guys? And so honestly, man, every summer, literally my mom can tell you, she used to get so mad at me every summer. Uh, I never went home. I would literally stay at college and uh, sign up for some school classes. And uh, she was like, why? I don't come home during the summer. I was like, I just, I just stay out here because it's more, it allowed me to be more focused. I would work out. Um, I would get like a little part time job. I'm working at Burger King, man. And literally, these are all the things that guys were laughing me about. Like I'm, <laughs> this yeah. is probably like I'm getting a little bit more of my scholarship and like school stuff was taken care of. But like literally, I had a job on campus. I was working on campus. Uh, worked at Burger King for a while. Wound up working at a, a Sony plant, working twelve hour shifts. <laughs> it was like the on a wow. Set. It was like. It was just crazy that I think about it, man. And I was just doing so much just to stay out there and stay afloat. But I knew out there I had a place to work out. I can go to a field and get some extra work in, just work on my craft and everything. And just like develop myself as a man, kind of. So um, again, wound up going to that senior year. We got new coaching staff. Um, and my linebacker coach came in. He was a guy named uh, Chad Williams. Uh, he wound up playing. He played at Southern Miss. He wound up playing in the NFL for like five years. And I remember he came in and he told me, Tyrell, you got a chance to play in the NFL. I was like, man, don't, don't, don't play with me like that. Like, ain't nobody looking for no D2 wow. linebacker. When he said it, I was just like, no, nah, don't play with that. He was like, trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Just uh, let's just have a good year this year. Wound up having a crazy year, man. Like, literally, the year before was five and seven, I want to say. The next year, we wound up going to the semifinals. Um, one of the guys on my team, he was doing really well, bringing in scouts. And the Seahawks um, scout wound up talking to me and just let me know, mm -hmm. like, he really was impressed by how I was playing and uh, continued to play well. So uh, fast forward, man, I wound up getting um, a tryout. See, that, that's one thing. So you know how you noticed that Lamont said he gave you 14 instead of 15. I'm going to correct Lamont again and let him know I wasn't undrafted. I was undrafted tryout. <laughs> So, yeah, which is even and most people don't even understand what it is. <laughs> You're filling a spot for rookie camp. Yeah, exactly. the body that weekend. I'm a three day guy. They literally told me to pack for three days. And wow, I remember because my 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 uh, my teammate he had got he got picked up undrafted. So they told him to pack for uh, two months, two uh, two and a half months. So when he told me this, I was like, No, nah, I'm gonna pack for. I'm for the pack for two and a half months. I'm staying out. I'm not going to back There home. you go. But uh, I know it's getting kind of long-winded, but the backstory to me having the pack for two and a half months was, man, after the draft, I get a call for a workout to Seattle. And my mom's standing right beside me. And she, I tell her, like, yeah, I'm going to Seattle when you come work out. She posted on Facebook that I've been signed by the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> Got love moms. <laughs> in my mind, I'm like literally like terrified. Like I'm like, oh my gosh! Like people keep retweeting it. I'm getting people like congratulating me and like reposting it. I'm like, I do not officially play for the Seahawks. I got invited <laughs> to mini camp tryout. It was literally like the most like nerve wracking thing ever. So, man, I had to really psych my mind out to like tell myself like, you gotta go up here and get a job. Like you gotta go up here and get a contract. Mm -hmm. And I, my, uh, my agent wound up telling me kind of like the situation was like you could, you could um, go up here, have a good game, make good, a good performance, and they'll sign you. But who knows? So in my mind, I'm like, you know what? 
I gotta go. I gotta go all the way out here from Georgia to Seattle. I've never been on the West Coast ever, so I'm like, I gotta go out here and I gotta stay out here because I cannot come back home. I cannot face those questions about <laughs> are you back home? <laughs> wow, signed to the Seahawks. So, man, that's how that's outstanding. So, so Terrell, like <clears throat> right now, so it seems through that experience, right? So yeah. there's always been what I'm hearing is you always put yourself in a spot to learn. Like be prepared to learn, right? And then and then the other thing you talked about was just work. Like just working at even looking at the people that are around you you're playing with, right? And and in your mind, not not thinking that uh you're knowing knowing where who you are. Like I'm not the, the five star athlete, however, I'm here, right? Yeah. And so you your preparation, your preparation truly met opportunity right uh even down to the and again i i, I know we used to call them looky loos so the tryout camp yeah. guys, we called them looky loos back when i was scouting like you bring me in for a looky loo right and so you 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 were that guy as well which, which makes me even more uh, proud and impressed with, with with your career but right now you know what what are what would you tell these young rookies right now who are just going to these rookie mini camps, like, and you're getting ready to start getting involved with the veterans? What would you, what would you tell them that they should be really be doing uh, uh, when they're on uh, at the facility and when they get off work? Um, I think the biggest thing is um, that positive self affirmation. Sometimes, I think they kind of really like uh, <clears throat> help me to kind of reach different goals in my life and. Um, on the field for sure, like believing in myself and really like not downplaying who I was and how I could, what I could accomplish. Uh, also, definitely like, putting that work that kind of went, yeah. went like that's definitely something I really like admire about people that work hard is like, it's one thing to believe in yourself and be arrogant and cocky, but like I can respect the guy that's arrogant and cocky, but gonna back it up with all the work and all the, all the kind of uh, background information about it. So. That's the biggest thing. I know for sure that's going to carry you further than a lot, a lot of different things sometimes. So that 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 positive self information and then putting that work in. Mm -hmm. So Tyrell, to kind of piggyback on that a little bit, uh, I mean, you you've established yourself, but you've you've been on multiple practice squads. You've come in and out of organizations. I think you were on the practice squad with the Chiefs twice. People. Can, can you take our listeners into the mental issues that you deal with when when you're told by a team that you know you're no you're you're no longer desired there, whether they do it classy or whether they're just kind of cold about it? But I mean, what's that mindset to keep going? Because you've, as I looked at it, I think it's eleven or twelve different teams in some fashion you you've been with. It may have been the same team a couple of different times, but that is just no easy task. Yeah. Um I think it's a testament to um, my family, the people that I got in my circle. Um, mm -hmm. I vividly, um, once I got I got um, released one time when I got released from the from the Raiders, and um, I was dealing with an injury at the time, so I wound up getting claimed, but I failed the entry physical, and I can remember like being like at a place like so low mentally, like that I considered that the ball would be over, and this was year year four maybe, right. maybe three year three it was year three exactly okay and um my brother um and my good friend um he's passed away but they would just like literally remind me like tyrell you're built for this like there's nothing that can knock you down it won't that you can't stand <clears> up. <throat> just having them in my corner uh having the right people around and definitely um it was just a big a big faith thing for me man i'm really big yep. on faith um mm -hmm. just kind of keeping the important things in front of me sometimes. So um, it was definitely tough, man. I can't even like even uh, my um, my friend would just always give me give me this this uh, turn for like the type of person I was. And he said, you are a perseverer. And he's like, he's never seen somebody go through so many different things and like still find a way to keep moving forward. And that's how I've always been in my life. Like I never like really took right. like, no matter what kind of was thrown my way. I was just like, you know what? We can make it through it. I'll smile through it and just figure it out as we go through it. Not something, not something just like sit on and just like 
mope about it and just let it tear you down for yeah. us. Well, you know, Terrell, I'm, as I'm looking and in, in, in with that, I think I want the I want the young um, uh, listeners, the, the young, the high school kids, the the, the the college kids, like understand, like you you get signed by a team, right? Sometimes you're there for you know, two weeks, two months. Sometimes you're there, they sign you, turn around, and you go on the next day. But talk again, you know, you're emphasizing the the, the 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 willingness and need to study, and then being able to study on short notice. So you go from one team to another team. You have to learn not only what they're doing special teams wise. They probably got you on every special team. Then you got to turn around and learn exactly what the mm-hmm. linebacker, the defensive scheme is, because then you might mess around and be playing. And that happened to you in Oakland, right? Yeah. All of a sudden now, you know, you're you're having your debut. You've already been in the league probably four years or so. You know, as Kendall mentioned, you know, practice squad, this, that, and other. Then you get to Oakland, and all of a sudden now you're in a big game against Carolina, right? Yep, yep. And, and you're doing your thing. So talk about that, that, that really, like, We'd say learning and studying, but you know, it's like, yeah, whatever. Well, no, this kind of is for real, correct? I mean, yeah. it's at this level for sure. Exactly, exactly. And that's and that's the um uh, I can't remember how my how, how I got put in the he's like the biggest, like um it's like one of the most like critical jobs. Like you really evaluate it every day, every second, every play. Like there's nothing that's not evaluated, and there's nothing that's not like <clears throat> count for you having your job. So I think that's something that people don't, some guys don't understand. Um, every little thing you do, how you practice this rep, how you looking on a um, on a scout team rep. So for me, I just kind of went in knowing like the the I get how rigorous this 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 would be sometimes. Like yeah. literally going with guys in the mid season that had the whole training camp, whole off season program to learn to learn a to learn a, a playbook, and you got to learn it in two weeks, not even two weeks. Yeah. That's being nice. Maybe if you're coming in and you sign off the streets, you got to learn it in four days, three days before Sunday's game, and they still expect you to perform. You can say – they can say you didn't have ample time, but, like, at the end of the day, they want to – you got to get thrown out there on Sunday and you got to perform. Like, it doesn't matter what what's what what came before or what the circumstances may be. So, I guess kind of like you got to, like it's, – it's, it's no way around it. You got to grit down. Like, you got to yeah. – you gotta you have to hone in you have to really like condition yourself to be like if this is something i really want then i'm gonna have to commit to this and accept what comes with it and that's kind of just like accepting that those long overnight hours those cutting out want to just relax and chill or in in the midst of all that studying the playbook and still taking care of your body and making sure you're getting your massages and making sure you stand up on so many different little things that a lot of people wouldn't consider in this field sometimes and I'm sure with that, you know, it's the family and friends. I mean, it's not necessarily a negative thing, but it is what it is. I mean, yeah. you can't you can't fix everything for things that happen in your family for other people. You have to draw some 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 barriers, right? Some parameters yeah. around. You know what? I, I can't be on the phone. I can't be texting with you. I can't because I have to do this. I know uh, being being in personnel most of my career. You know, they, they would bring guys in. It'd be like four linebackers. Yeah. Right. Then we decided that the, you guys all work out. We decided we're gonna we're gonna sign Terrell. Well, if you're not, if you in two days, like you said, they're evaluating everything and not just coaches, scouts. I mean, everybody after every practice is watching everything. If you if they feel you can't do it based on that, they're gonna you're gonna be out, and the other guy that you worked out with is gonna be coming in. So I think that um, you know, in college it's not that way, and I think right now in the NFL. Um, you know, for everybody, I mean, that's kind of the rite of passage. Yeah. Right. If you will, for for, for that. Um, let me ask you this real quick here. OK, your number one success in high school, your number one success in high school, college in the NFL. Conversely, your number one challenge in high school, college and the NFL. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, wow. Go through all three of them. Just real quick, what was, your, what was your number one success in high school? Was it making? Was it getting a scholarship? What, what uh, was it? My number one success in high school, easily, man, probably was graduating. Uh, it was something my parents and my family like really took pride in, um, okay. setting kind of like a new, a new standard for our family. So, okay. high school, uh, college, 
No one. Oh, college. Um, that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would think becoming an All-American is pretty got pretty far up there. It's not time. too bad. <laughs> All-American. I'm an All-American. Number one in the NFL. <clears throat> um, probably um, in 2020, I was a uh, top 10 in tackles on defense. Oh, time. wow. That was it. honestly like something I kind of like was pretty proud of myself. Uh, and I missed the first five games, so it was kind of like dope to be still in that in that circle. No, wow. Okay, now so now challenge number one challenge in high school. Quick one and in college and in the NFL. Number one challenge. Number one in high school, uh, probably leaving home. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. College. College. Um, Freaking um, public speaking. Okay, that class okay. was. <laughs> okay, okay. Number one, number one challenge in the NFL. Your career thus far. Um, probably my injury when I uh, got injured in Oakland, and literally had to sit out for about ten. The one was ten to fifteen weeks, and literally was at home, no job, not sure what was going to happen, not sure if my career was going to be over. So. Plus, you was coming in the office and seeing me every once in a while. Exactly. There you go. Can, that, that's interesting, though. Can you bring up uh, th that time? Because when I speak on emotional strength and everything, I talk about self-talk. And, you know, sometimes when you're hurt, you're by yourself. And the only and for me, I just things go on in my mind. I'm like, man, this I've got to change my mindset. I mean, to me, that's a huge deal. And it sounds like that's something you, that you're aware of, uh, first of all, and number two, that you make a conscious decision. Uh, if it's not right, it seems like you've made a conscious decision to change your mindset to help you out. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, for sure. I think um, the biggest thing was like accepting that the, those thoughts were there. Like, mind goes to a dark place when you're by yourself too long or yeah, your future or whatever it may be. Um, your, your mind can go to a really dark place. And you kind of like, for me, I had to like, acknowledge them, accept them, and then just start to combat them. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I think that's so important. Can, can you talk about a little bit? Uh, I remember my career. I saw so many <clears throat> guys come in and out of the uh, of, of the training room or the, 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 uh, the locker room who didn't make the team who had the skills. I mean, they had the ability. There's no doubt about it. And, and I feel like a lot of us, we, we generally recognize that. Uh, have you had that same experience as well? And what do you see in people and what do they miss? Because it, it applies to the locker room in the NFL, but I would think it probably applies to everybody listening in life of some things that, that you need to be successful. Man, so um, quick story. Just doing a, a public event, a community event <clears throat> with the Jags and uh, for a powder puff team, it was given recognition for uh, being like the top powder puff players uh, out here in the area. And one of the girls, she literally uh, had sprained her uh, ACL, I think. And me and her were just chit chatting about it. And I was just like really recognizing how like she was like trying to mentally understand like where she was going to do with sports and how her life would continue on. And she's literally a, a junior in high school at this point. Right. So, you know, telling like what's going through her mind. So, like, I just quickly reassured her, like, you can make it through it. But I also was honest with her about how hard it could be sometimes, like literally putting those days and days and really not seeing no progression yet. But once you start to pound those days on on top of each other, you'll see yourself slowly getting better and slowly getting back to who you are. And that's the hardest thing for a lot of people. Like people don't know how to, to continuously like work at something. They want to see quick success. So like, right. Um, I think it's just a microcosm of life and, that's one of the hardest things a lot of people have a hard time adjusting to is like committing to something so much that you might not see gains in a month or two months, mm -hmm. yeah. three months, but that fourth month might be a breakthrough month. So uh, uh -huh. just watching mm -hmm. guys kind of like not have that mental fortitude to kind of keep going through things. Again, it's a real thing to kind of like be in a negative place in your mind and not. Yeah. Stuff. But again, I think you also have to combat those things and kind of like positive reassure yourself and then have positive people around you to kind of like reinforce that and then i think once you kind of like figure that out you can have your real have a real breakthrough through those things 
So Tyrell, so talk, I know I know with that, and that's that's fantastic. And I know that you have a you're a man of compassion. All right, you're a tremendous father yep. um, and a proud dad. And so t- tell our listeners about you know wh- where you've committed your time in terms of your foundation, uh, and how might they be able to connect with you and maybe help support your foundation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the Tyrell Adams Foundation. Um, it's a, a family foundation where I kind of like we give out and reach back to my community where I was born and raised. Um, I do a lot of community outreach thing. I think it's big for me is um, just reaching out back to those who kind of helped raise me and uh, showing those um, kids in that community that um, showing them different experiences. For me, I just know um, growing up, there was a lot of things I didn't know were possible until I literally left Atlanta, Georgia, or went outside of the state of Georgia. And I didn't first fly my first flight until uh, my junior year of college. So my uh, in the world kind of just was uh, limited in a sense. So just kind of opening it up and just showing love through the simplest form sometimes, whether it be through our uh, annual Thanksgiving uh, giveaway, our annual um, uh, Christmas toy drive, um, or through camps. Um, I'm doing like a May 20th, I'm taking a, a bunch of guys from my college and uh, high school to a mini conference in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, uh, with Eric Thomas, and um, I'm having my first celebrity uh, golf tournament. Well, my, it's the second time, my second annual uh, celebrity golf tournament. But it's honestly, man, just like I have a big compassion for family. I've had a big family. I got five brothers, um, so I'm hmm. really big, like giving and showing love to people, no matter um, no matter where they're from, no matter who they are. Sometimes, so. And how I think it should be noted also that uh, the shirt you're wearing right now, I'll let you go, uh, Lamont, next, but let love have the last word. I noticed that right off, and and, and I just thought that was a really cool thing. I mean, I that, exactly what you just talked about is exactly what that shirt says, and, and it's obviously an important thing to you, so kudos. So, Terrell, uh, website, how can how can our listeners yeah. uh, oh, find so you? So you can check us out over at TyrellAdamsFoundation.com again. Um, and also we have a uh, Instagram, which is the same Tyrell Adams foundation. Uh, so you guys can follow us and show us some love. Okay. Well, I, I, I want to just throw this in there. I, I understand that this linebacker, uh, that that's going to be a starting linebacker for the Jacksonville Jaguars this year. And I know they're going to play the chiefs. I just saw the schedule at some point, <laughs> but, but, but I understand that today, uh, that Tyrell is going to be taking some golf lessons. Is that correct? Man, yes. Oh, sir. yes, sir. There we go. Yesterday. Listen, last year, man, I had my tournament, and I probably was the bottom three worst players. <laughs> <laughs> so this year, I'm trying to actually be prepared and at least run with the middle of the pack. I'm not saying the top, like, 10%, maybe, like, the middle middle 50 Well, your, your history certainly you. has proven that when you set those kind of marks, you make – progress so i know who your coach is ted will do a fantastic job terrell i want to just thank you so much man for just you know coming on our show yeah um, i think uh you know all the listeners especially those in kansas city this is what you kind of could have meant you missed with yeah. with with not having terrell inside of arrowhead nation but uh, uh you are a great reflection of, of of really what a path is for a uh, nfl player a, uh, a guy that wants to play in the NFL and 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 really how you stay because you know it's always change, right, Kendall? I mean, it, it just changes. The only constant is change, absolutely. Yeah. And Tyrell, as as a fellow Division II athlete at Pittsburgh State University, Pittsburgh. I commend you for getting up there. You're exactly right, the Gorillas, and um, I think really you're just a testament, and it, and it really builds on the fact that I mean. Anybody can do anything if they have their mindset right. And, and a lot of people want to be where we're at, but they don't always want to do what we did to get there. And, and you did some things uh, that just simply a lot of people probably weren't willing to do. You dealt with some some cat calls, people wondering why you're working so hard, which doesn't always make sense. But kudos to you, because uh, certainly um, it, it's no small feat to make it in the NFL, as, as you obviously know. Man, for sure. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate All it. All right, well, you have a fantastic weekend, yeah. and uh, let's care. get together soon. But you guys as well, man. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Tyrell. Thanks, Tyrell. That's an impressive dude. That's that's awesome that you get to be down there and be around him. And and um, I mean, I mean, 
our listeners can discern so much from that because ultimately it came from a couple different things, belief in himself. But quite honestly, I think what I heard also was him listening to somebody else uh, identify a talent that he wasn't really sure he had. Yeah. You know, you know, and, and again, you know, he, he showed where, you know, he knew who he was and yeah. he knew what he wasn't and he wasn't trying to chase somebody else's talent. He stayed within right. himself and said, you know what, this is what I need to work on and I need to be prepared. So his ability to, to learn, to study, uh, to, to prepare, right, it's just insane. And, you know, when you throw the injury factor, you never talked about injury in high school and college. Right. You finally get that shot and now you're having all these injuries. I mean, that, and, and, but to still have these teams – you know, the minute you get released, somebody signing you, that means you're doing something right. And and, and yeah. you and you work in somebody's, you will fit in somebody's locker room. And I just think that um he's going on eight years, uh, and and it has a really good shot here in Jacksonville, from what I understand, uh, to really be a starter and be an impact player. So for uh, all of our young listeners, when these coaches are telling you about talking to you about studying and 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 preparing and, and working hard, it's for real. It might yeah. sound cliche-ish, but it's for real. Uh, and if you have to prepare when the opportunity comes, it's already too late. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, again, uh, Terrell's um, um, a testament, and I got a chance to be around him in Oakland. And, you know, he's really just a, a young pro, and I, and I appreciate the relationship. Yeah, well, it's awesome. Well, Uh, That's the end of our time. Beyond the game, I am Kendall Gammon. He is Lamont Winston, and we appreciate you listening. We appreciate you watching, and uh, this will be out soon, and and can't wait till our next time. Take care, Lamont. All right, thank you, listeners. You guys have a wonderful weekend.